How's it going, Short Kings? It's week eight, and the dwarves are on a bye, so that means we're going to have a lot of recruiting to do to start off this episode. But sticking with the theme of our previous episodes, we're going to continue with some housekeeping to make this series a little bit more difficult. Uh, we've kept the user sliders pretty much the exact same uh, this week. I don't think I changed anything, but the CPU, we have bolstered them again. Uh, increasing pretty much everything except for the kicking sliders. That should hopefully allow these games to continue to be closer and closer and, you know, we realistically shouldn't be winning a lot of these. We've got a lot of points to put into recruiting this week, so we'll get into that. And unfortunately, we're going to lose out on a few players, so Joe Watson doesn't want to be with us. We don't have a level into the lockout for Peter Singleton. So we're going to lose out on the 69 overall corner. Adam Boone, the 69 overall running back, is also going to go. Uh, Victor Miner, the uh, 66 overall corner, wants to go to uh, North Texas. ULM is going to pick up Gabe Thompson. Gosh, players dropping like flies here. Ron Mayo goes to Memphis. And I think that's it. But six players right off the bat that we're going to need to replace on this board. As you can see at this point in the season, there are only 47 prospects that we can look at that are within our height requirements. And I got to imagine a lot of them are either already on our board or are committed elsewhere. So we'll sort by low lock and just kind of grab what we can. We've filled our board back up and I'm going to go ahead and scout everybody. And Chance Mead, the wide receiver, you know, not the greatest player, but still goes up four overall on his way to a gem maybe. And another wideout going up a ton. Going up five overall to 61 is Thomas Randall. Shane Anderson, as we fully scout him, is going to go up to 69 overall. The punter, Rick Thompson, will end up being a gem. <laughs> oh, if only we needed punters. We go ahead and check who we've got leads with. It's looking pretty solid. We're going to be offering scholarships again to pretty much all of these players that are in the lead or that we're in the lead with. That's we'll just try and spread the points around as fairly as we can. I want to get a full 25 players, even if they're not the greatest. It's better than nothing. Give the rest of our points and a scholarship offer to Kenyon Dunn just because strong safeties are going to be hard for us to come by. And dump our remaining points. Uh, let's go for the punter. Why not? That's going to be all of our recruiting done for the bye week. So we'll go ahead and advance to week nine against the Monarchs of Old Dominion. Oh, unfortunately for us, Kenny Undunn's just going to go ahead and commit to UTSA. So it ends up being a waste of points and we won't have a chance to get that strong safety. Well, we'll go ahead and throw the rest of our points around here. I really hope that we can start to uh, pull in some commits. Nobody has committed yet, even though we're, I don't know, looking like we have a solid lead with a lot of players. So let's schedule three more. I don't like doing competitive visits, but I think that we're going to be stuck with having them with how many halfbacks we have. So we'll send them to the Western Kentucky game just to get those visits against uh, top 25 school. Gives us uh, a bunch of extra XP. Just like that, our recruiting for the week is going to be done. Looking at this game, Old Dominion 5-1. Another solid team. Herb Street still going to go with us. Uh, but once again, they have the edge overall and just pretty much everywhere. Total defense and rush defense, the only place where we're looking good. Their one loss of the year was to a 4-3 and three Utah State. But other than that, they've had some pretty solid wins, except for having to go to overtime last week against UTEP. And we're looking to make it six straight wins for the Dwarves. You can see 81 overall for Old Dominion. We're 72. Just get into this and hope for the best. There's uh, one player visiting this game, and it's going to be John Bolden, the tackle. Good old one star. Their top players, high 80s overall. That's going to be difficult. Uh, no injuries for either team. And you better believe we're going to come out and just try to run as best as we can i really do like setting up the run we've been having a hard time in cusa we're both in the east division with a uh, number 10 in the nation western kentucky looming over the top undefeated but for one of us this is going to be our first conference loss and our second loss of the regular season
We're at Foreman Field on the road. It's an interesting stadium, it really is. And we're gonna hope that we can step out and just shut the fans out real early and send the Monarchs uh, packing back to their dorms. We're gonna win the coin toss because Tails never fails and I want to see what our defense can do right off the bat. There's a five mile an hour crosswind today and it's kind of a mediocre kick. This football game's underway. Decent, well, it looked like it was gonna be decent coverage. We zoomed down the field, but they're gonna be at about the 30. Coming out in the cover two to start this one. See if maybe we can get an early stop. I expect them to kind of go to their running back a lot in this one and oh, quarterback just missed a man. We did up his uh, QB accuracy with the sliders, but threw it in between two guys and it's incomplete on first down. On second down, they're going to go back to pass again. Ooh, that's on me for leaving the running back wide open. Yeah, that's a quick 13 yards for them. I don't know what it is about these teams that we've been playing, but they seem to love the hurry up. Ooh, great handoff. He's breaking tackles. Ferris finally pulls him down at the 30. That's a 30-yard carry for Ray Lowry. Lowry. Who knows how to say that? He is one of their highest rated overall players at 89. He might tear this defense up. And quarterback will keep it here. I was not expecting to see a QB keeper, but Schuler Bentley goes for two. At this point, if we could hold these guys to a field goal, I think it might be a win. And, oh, the receiver just dropped it. He had him easily inside the five, but the receiver couldn't hold on to it. That's going to bring up a third and long. Now we can definitely expect a pass. I want our guys to jam up at the line, maybe. There's some coverage. They go with an out route way short of the line, and it'll be fourth and five. The kick is up. It's good. And they're going to take a 3 nothing lead. What's the studio update? Ah, it doesn't matter to us. Middle Tennessee beating Marshall. Good for them. Gene Nunez back to return. They kind of field it at the one. Can we bounce Nunez to the outside? We've seen him take so many returns to the house already this year. That one gets to 30 to the 35. It's going to allow this offense to come out on the field for the first time with good field position. Nothing doing on the run. Uh, I feel like I'm kind of realizing a problem that we might run into. Maybe not this year, but in the future as we've, you know, struggled to get linemen. And that issue is that we might not be able to run in the future at all. It might have to be quick passes for our entire playbook. As we can see there, we go deep to get the first down after kind of struggling to run. And we're going to throw it. Oh, we had A.J. Norton wide open on the uh, four vert, but just overthrew him a little bit. Slot outs on second and ten. You already know that I love to throw to the running back in this play. And Talib Noel's got a good catch for 17 yards. Try to get a little bit of a run going on this first down. And it's just nothing. Linebacker immediately gets pressure and will lose three. On second and 13, I want to try the screen, see if we can find Talib. And, the, you know, <laughs> damn it. I didn't get rid of it in time. They, they weren't bringing a whole lot of pressure. They read the screen and I was trying to look for somebody else downfield. I'm expecting to find Donnie Schaefer, Khalif James on this one. Donnie's got the one-on-one. -on -one. He's beat his man. He's going to be a little bit overthrown. He jumps to catch it, but holds on through the contact for a first down. This is a nice route. He was getting chased the whole way. Just got to get that a little bit lower. First and ten, we'll try another run. It's a dive up the middle, and Talib Noel kind of shut off one tackler, but ran into the offensive lineman, and we'll only get a yard there. Talib now on four carries only has one yard. We'll give him the counter on second and nine. It hopes that the misdirection helps, but no. He's now at negative two yards on the game. We've got another third long to go for it here. Um... See if somebody can get open quick. I see our A, it's AJ Norton. And he's into the end zone. I did not expect to see a touchdown on that play, but AJ Norton does a good job hitting the, or taking the contact and getting in. Big six there. Extra point is good. 
Yeah, Western Kentucky, number 10 in the nation and undefeated, is currently down 7. Uh, kind of early in the second quarter to a 2-5 and five Troy. That could be big. It's going to be just another decent kickoff here. Donnell Jolly doesn't quite have the leg to get that one to the end zone without the wind to help him. Uh, but he's got the speedsters on his uh, on his return team to help him not give up a whole lot. They're going to be starting this drive from just across the 20 after fielding it uh, kind of near the 5. And on first down, they're going to run it. Can we get to him? Big hit from Hamilton, but he gets shoved off. And they run. Ray Lowry, gosh, two carries, 39 yards for the man. Second and one, they're going to go into their hurry up. Let's see if maybe we can focus him down and get a little bit of pressure. They do have four wide. It's going to be a read option. Quarterback keeps it and picks up six yards and a first down. We're going to try to switch to the man for a little bit. And, ooh, I just got a break. That's going to be a false start. Let's end up back five yards. We'll go ahead and... Focus on the quarterback on these options just because it's kind of cheesy. Hopefully that allows us to just focus Ray Lowry down and get the stops that we need. They're going to go to him on first and 15, and I was there. Surprisingly rare user play for me. We only give up a couple of yards. And back, at, back to this damn hurry up. Old Dominion being real rude. Quarterback's going to scramble. Oh, I missed. Bentley, what is he doing? He's running in circles. He got back to the line of scrimmage. I have no idea what just happened on that play. Third and 14. All that we have to do now is just get one little stop. Don't let him get the first down. We'll get the ball back with a chance to extend the lead. Kind of asking a little bit, I realize, but got to hope for the best. Running back does go out into a route. And again, I don't know, I don't know what the play call is there. He checks down for three yards. It's fourth and 11, and they're going to be forced to punt. And you don't want to punt to Gene Nunez. He's dangerous for a good reason. Oh, gosh. Well, I guess it doesn't matter if your gunner just teleports through a couple of blockers. Well, we'll stick with the quick passing here. And on first down, we've got a quick one to Dane Upshaw. Good eight yards there. Not sure if this kind of play is going to be good or bad for us, but it's a play action on second. And we've got A.J. Norton. He's already got one touchdown, and now he's got us to midfield. If we can get to the line, I'd like to get off one more play before the quarter break. Just a little deep shot on first down from midfield. I see it. A.J. Norton again. Oh, he dropped the ball, though. Bruh. Old Dominion's recovered it, and they got a little bit of extra yardage on top of it. Oh, I really hope he was down. I have to take a look at the review on this, but the Monarchs, as it stands on the field, have the ball. And yeah, that's a clean fumble. Oh, it's so disappointing for A.J. Norton. Already had a touchdown. That was going to be his third really big reception, but it's going to be Old Dominion ball going into the second quarter. We're already doing really poor in the turnover differential this year, and that's certainly not going to help. Quarterback throws that one away. If we can just force a three and out and get the punch, we'll be okay. But if we give up points because of that, then I'm not going to be a happy camper. Second and ten. And a couple guys coming across my zone. I'm there to hit Vaughn early. They did get seven yards, but at least it's third and three. We're going to get a little bit risky here and bring the blitz on this third and three. They do hand it off, which was the right call. Caps was there. But he fell forward for the first down. If Caps would have just planted him, we forced the punt. Unfortunately, it's first down near midfield. Maybe we can force them to fumble. It's going to be another handoff. Bad move from me, but we only give up four yards. Second and six now. And that kind of came into my zone a little bit late to react. So Jonathan Dewar is going to get 17 there. Change up the defense a little bit. Cover two sink, but they're going to put it on the ground. I got to say, it's not a wise idea trying to run to the edge against the Dwarves team. Too fast to allow that. You got to pound it up the middle. Forces up uh, second and 13. They go play action. Mm, kind of froze me there. I had a, got stuck in a weird little animation. So they get a lot of it back. Eight yards there. It'll be third and five as they just continue with this. Hurry up. I like the cover two sink so far. So we'll keep sticking with it for a little bit. Could see a run here on third down. 
They are maybe gonna snap the ball eventually. There it is. It's a screen. Gosh, I was way late to react to it, but oh, dwarves swarmed the area. They didn't get anything out of that one. We're gonna probably see a field goal attempt. Just with this distance, I'm going to go ahead and send a couple guys back and try to return this. You never know when Gene Nunez will get us a kick six. And that'll help out a little bit too, so long as they continue to try to go for this. It seems to me like the field goal formation causes the most false starts for the AI in this game. Which I won't complain about because it doesn't happen to me. And ooh, this kicker is good! I did not expect him to hit that one, but he drilled it, no problem. Troy still up on Western Kentucky, going into halftime. Well, after the fumble, we only gave up a field goal, so we still have the one-point lead, but we gotta put up some more points on this drive, I think. Huge say, oh, the pancake was massive. Nunez in a foot race. He's not gonna get there. There's no penalties on the field, and we're gonna be at the 26-yard line. Those were some massive massive blocks I'm looking at Norton right away here first and ten psych we're gonna hit Khalif James and it wasn't true he was gonna hold on to it but uh, I had some confidence in him and we're just outside that first and goal slot outs on this first down and you already know I'm throwing it to the running back we'll give to leave Noel nine yards and his second and one from the one yard line I gotta say, I'm not a big fan of our running game so far, so I hope that we can get the yard, but I really don't want to have to Seattle this and throw it. Thankfully, oh gosh, thank you, Noel, for getting in there. Gives us our second touchdown of the day. The kick's gonna be good, no problem there. This is a 14-6 lead, and Hawk Disco, ooh, playing a little slap pass there. Jolly, that's gonna be just another, actually, that's his best kick of the day so far. Got that almost to the goal line, and good coverage. They're going to be, again, just barely past the 20. We'll keep trying stuff out. Go with the cover one robber here. Get a little man defense going. It's a screen. Penn can't get off his block. There's a broken tackle, almost two, or basically two. Zach Pascal is going to go out of bounds for a quick first down. 2.48 left in the half, so they're going to, I mean, I guess it's not really changing the game plan, but they'll stick with this uh, hurry up, go with another screen. Marquez Little gets four. Hopefully we can get the ball back with enough time to do something ourselves. Quarterback, he took a sack there. Coverage was good. Schuler Bentley's gonna lose seven and it's third and long. I think running the man might be the wisest decision. You don't need quite as much awareness, I feel like. And on third and 13, he's gonna throw it deep. Wow, that's a height problem right there. Zach Pascal got it. Lester was uh, step in step with him, but just couldn't get up there to get to the ball. Almost inside the red zone now, and they went right back to him. That time Lester did get beat. Well, just like that, Monarchs are inside the red zone. It's gonna be, it looks like, yeah, it's a draw, and eh, five yards, not great, not terrible for us. So Old Dominion takes their second timeout. Don't be surprised if they continue to put it on the ground. Just uh, under two minutes, they go with a draw, and I don't know where the pressure came from, but we hit him in the backfield, and even after stumbling forward, he'll lose a yard. Third and five, a minute and 40 on the clock. This would be a huge opportunity to force another field goal. They're gonna go to the air. They found a man. He dropped it. Oh, we caught a break there. You know, I even increased the catching ability of these wide receivers on the sliders. I'm fairly certain that they drop another fake. one. In. Oh, it's a fake! And he got it! I have never seen the CPU run a fake. It works perfectly. The holder throws a dot to the back of the end zone to find the touchdown. And now they're going to go for two on the point after to tie this game up. The trickeration coming out. We're gonna go to the air again. They found Pascal, and just like that, it's a tie ball game. We got complacent and thought that they were gonna be fine taking their third field goal. They said no. Western Kentucky finally takes the lead against Troy. Well, now with a minute and a half in all our timeouts, we're gonna hope to take that lead back. That was something else. 
I can't even be mad. That was ballsy, and it worked out for him. Nunez, another decent return. We're in close to midfield. Well, if that's how this game's going to go, we could see ourselves a shootout. We're going to just lob one up for Donnie Schaefer, and he came down with it. Oh, I thought that was going to be picked when I threw it. A minute and 17. We're going to save our timeouts and probably just find Noel real quick. They're going to bring pressure. That's beautiful for me because we can hit to leave Noel. Dive for the end zone, and he got in. Oh, it's so dangerous to dive in this game, but with a running back, I have a little bit more faith. He gets into the end zone, and a few seconds off the clock, we're already in. Nice little play. F misses the middle linebacker and dives. I don't know if he was in, but I'm not sure if they'll overturn that. Two plays, 59 yards, and 24 seconds off the clock. And honestly, I'm a little bit worried that we might give uh, Old Dominion plenty of time to score again. Another returnable kickoff. If they get the right blocking, this could be big. But just, uh, we're getting lucky so far. Well, who are they throwing the deep ball here to, is my question. Trips to the left. Two more wideouts on the right. They're going to go to the air. We know that. The question is, is our man going to be anywhere good enough? Because they'll find Melvin Vaughn for eight. Clock will be moving, though. I feel like I should probably just be in a normal cover two here, but we'll be fine with it. Maybe. Jonathan Dewar gets nine there. They're moving quick. Let's go two man under. Get an extra safety back there. These quick passes don't give us uh, a chance to get to the quarterback. They go across the middle again. He breaks a tackle and they're across midfield. God, this is <laughs> just a flurry of offense from both sides all of a sudden. At least I'm having fun with this one. 33 seconds on the clock now. And Benjamin. Oh, I thought maybe he had a chance to get there. Too short. Leaves the man open. Schuler Bentley is just turning it up here. 28 seconds and one timeout now. I was going to say, I'd be surprised if they put it on the ground. They will go deep, and Vaughn's in. <laughs> Melvin Vaughn goes 27 yards there on the reception. Gets into the end zone through the contact, and now we've got 23 to try to answer back one more time. The saving grace for us is we get the ball to start the third. That kick's good, no problem. Well, if this is how the, the rest of the game goes, we might have a really high-scoring one. Nunez coming out of the end zone. He got a couple of blocks, made a man miss. G. Nunez in a foot race. He's going to barely get tackled. Oh, if Nunez could have taken that to the house, I would have been so ecstatic. Instead, we've got 16 seconds and all three of our timeouts to try and heave a couple balls deep and try to get into the end zone. We might take a field goal. Oh, that was a bad throw for me. Tried to hit Norton, but just uh, didn't wait for that route to develop long enough. 12 seconds now. Looks like they're bringing one of the safeties in pressure. So that could mean Norton's wide open, depending on what the other one does. And yeah, Norton is going to be open. We just threw it behind him. Take our first time out. That was a bad pass. Richie Kirk might have had a touchdown if that pass was better. Eight seconds. We only have a couple attempts, and I don't know if we're in field goal range yet. We're going to heave it up. Khalif James came down with it. 32 yards for the touchdown. I thought that one was going to be picked off too. Just thrown against the taller defender. He got a step and it was enough. Richie Kirk making up for the bad pass on the last throw. Just throwing a dot there. And Khalif just shrugged off that attempt to tackle him. He said, nah. Well, three seconds on the clock. I don't think we're going to run into problems here. Just an absolute blizzard of points being scored there. Uh, what was that? Two minutes, and we saw at least three touchdowns. And, oh, please tackle this guy. There's no way this he's still on his feet. <laughs> we'll go into the half. A tiny bit of a scare there. Hawk Disco, got to be pleased with his offense and just live it at his defense. But we do get the ball to start the third quarter, and that might be what it takes for us to take the lead permanently and win this game. I'd like to just see a quick little blurb of these highlights and all the touchdowns that got scored just so many deep passes how about that i maybe could have challenged that uh, fake field goal certainly have never seen that from the cpu and then just touchdown 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 gosh let's get this third quarter started if it's anything like the end of that uh the end of that half 
We're in for a treat here. Oh my god. You gotta be kidding me, Nunez. He just muffed it. He dropped the kickoff, and we're gonna be starting at our own one yard line on this drive. You have got to be kidding me. Well, I'm throwing up a four verts and hoping for the best here. Can't take a sack. We certainly can't afford to run. Gosh, the camera angle is terrible. And Talib Noel just dropped the pass. <laughs> oh my god. I'm honestly astonished. As I'm just going to continue to just throw the ball deep and hope for the best. We'll put Norton on a slant. He's already my main target. And this is going to be picked, isn't it? No, Dane Upshaw. <laughs> Damn it. He came up with the catch and then fumbled it. It's our second fumbled catch of the day. And of course the Monarchs are going to come up with it in great field position. I don't know how you can call that a catch. And it's not something we can challenge because it's going to check the fumble and not whether he actually ever had possession. So just like that, <laughs> we lose the ball. And Old Dominion has a chance to score. Their defense coming up clutch. Thankfully, gosh, Schuler Bentley having to throw that one away. We just needed that. Take a little bit of that momentum away from the home team. Absolutely absurd that my receivers are having such a hard time holding on to the ball. They're going to go with a screen. Caps, you got to be there. Good job. We'll plant them. Gain a three is okay. Try to hold these guys to a field goal again. We know it's going to be a pass. Five wide, quad left. He's going to run the out route on me and just... Again, not tall enough to be able to go up and make a play on the ball, but we get the tackle, fourth and two. And they're gonna try to kick the field goal. We've already seen this kicker's got a leg, so we won't try to return anything. Instead, we'll go field goal safe zone in case they try to throw it again on us. I don't trust this team and, oh, he pushed it. Just barely pushed it right, they're gonna miss. We'll maintain our seven point lead. It honestly feels a little bit weird starting the drive, uh, you know, already with the ball and not on a kick return. And somehow we just picked up 11 yards on the ground with Talib Noel. It's almost like we lulled their defensive line to sleep with the passes and they just didn't even think that we could throw. Dane Upshaw, go back to him. He holds onto that one for eight yards. We're gonna go to Noel on the run here. Second and two, nice little cut. Bounces to the outside, gets north for the first. On first and 10, we'll see. Can we find Norton? Oh, that was a bad pass. Almost came down with it too. Hit him in the hands, but the contact forces it loose. Ernie is gonna be in for the time being. Uh, Noel got the wind knocked out of him. So backup running back, but he's got some speed and ooh, this is a risky throw. Norton, oh, intercepted. I should have known I couldn't throw that far. They pick up a block as well. Oh no, this could be dangerous. Three turnovers and we're still in the lead. Imagine if we could just hold on to the football. We're early in this season. This guy's already set a uh, new school record for picks in a season at seven. I don't know if it's really good or really bad. That guy's, you know, the one that got the interception. They go with a screen. Ooh! How are we not going to get a pick six there? He threw it straight into the lineman. It would have been incredible had it worked out. Instead, it'll be second and 10. They will, oh, I absolutely bought that play action. I thought they were gonna hand it off. <laughs> Completely abandoned my assignment. They're looking a first down there, and just this hurry up is kind of annoying. It doesn't allow me to make the adjustments I want or get subs in. It's almost like real life. It's another play action. Oh, a screen pen was there. Unable to do anything though. My guys are just too short to even like go up for interceptions. That'll be first down again. Cross midfield. They're gonna run it eventually, I just know it. Running back releases laid on a route and we get a sack. Schuler Bentley, everybody was covered. That time it's our third sack of the game. Good job from Keon Wilcox. Second and 14, they'll pass. Four wideouts in formation. Yeah, I left my man way behind. Penn got beat. And they're gonna get 13 and a half, almost the full 14 yards there. Let's bring some pressure now on third down. Expecting this to be a run. It's an option out to the edge. Quarterback gets it off there, is blocking all over the place. Benjamin thankfully has the speed to catch up there. If you're watching me on Twitch ever, 
By the way, that's twitch.tv slash broodmaster69. You know that this is probably my favorite place to have a first down on the field. The 11-yard line, it allows you to pick up another first down if you get stuffed at the goal line. Uh, I forgot I was in a zone there, and I'll give up the touchdown. No need to pick up another first down at the goal line if you can just do it all in one play. Just like that, we're tied up again. A little over halfway through the third quarter. Nunez, you better hold on to the ball here, because I want to return this. He's been close to breaking some free. He's got a couple blocks again. Nah, that was mediocre. Probably should have bounced it to the edge. Well, the passing game has both been the best and worst part of this offense. We're going to go to it, and... Oh, uh, I didn't know who to throw it to. I couldn't... He was... I, I thought it was why whatever the receiver I was looking for was actually right bumper. So I was hitting the wrong button wondering why he wasn't throwing. And just like that, we take a big 10-yard sack, so... You gotta keep throwing bombs, hoping for the best. And that's probably picked. Oh my gosh. That's not even who I thought was gonna have a chance. We might have got lucky. If somebody else goes up for it, it is a pick. Well, so far we're three of three on our third downs. This is definitely the hardest one yet. Norton has been good in this situation. We're gonna throw to him. He's definitely short, but we'll go for this. We haven't shown really any good signs of stopping them. So we'll just come out. And throw for this. Actually, I'll probably end up, uh, let's see. First, I want an audible to a four verts. I want Kirk to be starting in the shotgun. I want a well on a slant and upshaw. And the same thing. And we're basically just going to roll outside the pocket here and scramble for this one. Kirk should have the speed to pick it up. He might pick up a block. No. We're going to get out of bounds, though, because we know that he can fumble. And we don't want our fourth turnover of the game. Play action now on first down. There's some pressure. We're going to get rid of it. And oh, Donnie Schaefer couldn't quite get there. We got to figure out how we can uh, work some runs into this. But we'll try a screen instead. They've got it covered pretty well. And yeah, we're going to lose 10 yards on that. Oh my gosh. I don't know if I've ever seen a CPU so in tune to stop the screen. He was with it the whole way. Just like that, we're back to a third and 20. Looking for Donnie Schaefer again. Cheese him with the uh, the corner strike. It's open, but we're going to have to go for it on fourth down. Curious to see if the middle strike is, or middle slant is going to be enough. We'll keep uh, Noel as an extra blocker. I like Norton. I like Nunez. I like James. And I, I got a little bit... Uh, lost there. I'm gonna throw that one away. I uh, I kind of just forgot what was happening and I think Richie Kirk might have been injured there as well. Oh, that was a terrible play and it's a hundred percent on me why it was so bad. I just had a big old brain fart in the middle of it. So it gives them great field position with a chance to take the lead now. Ooh, good pressure there. He got hit as he was throwing. Kirk's out for two quarters. Uh... I'm not against letting Chip Breedlove get a chance today to play. He's not as fast, but he does have a better arm. So we're going to be seeing our backup quarterback. He's going to oh, find a man wide open inside the red zone. We're almost at the end of the quarter. Stringing out the running back. Ah, he shouldn't have gotten three yards there. Well, hold up those fingers. We're going into the fourth, and it's a, it's a locked up game here. I feel like Monarchs might have the edge. Uh, yeah, we'll sub in Chip Breedlove for that injury. And from the 16-yard line, see if this defense can come out and play a good six minutes. Or the team can come out and play a good six minutes and maybe walk away with a win. Feels like this might go to overtime. They're going to go draw on second down and just a weird cut from the running back, but it, he's able to get his momentum back and pick up the first down. All right, we got to switch back to the zone. Man has been giving up a little bit too much. First and goal, it's an option. Quarterback, we gotta hit him. <laughs> Everybody was sold out getting to the edge to stop the running back. The quarterback just was able to go north and get a few yards there. Second and goal from the four now. Might try to gap this. Oh, I was I was a little bit too early. Running back didn't get in. Ray Lari, only three yards when I thought he only needed three. But they spotted him a little bit short. I got to bring pressure here, right? Engage eight. This is this has got to be a, 
a run. Oh, <laughs> I was in the neutral zone. They don't call it and I got the stop. <laughs> I got lucky as hell. Fourth and goal. Uh, they're supposedly going to kick the field goal. You better believe we'll be in the, the safe formation. I don't... Uh, I think they... In real life, I get called for uh, neutral zone infraction. Kicker's going to put that one through, and they've got the three-point lead. Oh, if G Nunez wanted to pick a time to show up right now, this would be it. Turn on the Jets, get a couple of blocks, and head towards the end zone. Yes, please, and he got some blocks. <laughs> Can he turn on the Jets now? Nunez, one man dives and misses. He's at the 20, the 10, and it's gonna be a touchdown. He sets again the record for the longest kick return in NCAA history. Oh my gosh, once again, breaking his own of 102. And we're gonna take a quick lead. What is this game? Oh man, it's got real quiet here. As the Monarchs fans are a little bit stunned. And Western Kentucky survives the upset against Troy. They'll win it by 10 and remain undefeated. Get a decent kickoff here. See if we can continue to have some good coverage. Jolian ends. Oh, this is a good return. Oh, ho, 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 man. He was close to breaking one back. If they would have returned that, I would have been shook. 100%. If the defense can't come out and make an impact on this play, we're or in, on this drive, we're in trouble. Oh, Marks, again, I'm telling you, I'm so used to playing with the Western Arizona Giraffes and being six foot seven or taller on every player, that that would have been a pick if, if the guy was taller. I just know how this game works. Instead, we're too short to get to it. They'll, they'll get eight yards. I'm gonna bring one of my safeties in. I was expecting a... Uh, a pass there. Benjamin, Frank Benjamin got his hand on that one. Oh, it would have been great if he picked that off, but third and two. At least we'll have a chance here to get the, the stop on third down. They're going to run it. Uh, great handoff call. I should have blitzed. They'll get six yards there and get to midfield. First down now. Four minutes in the game. Plenty of time for them to work with. If they score, they take the lead, and it you know, puts it on us to kick a field goal to tie or score a touchdown to win. And he just broke a couple of nice tackles there. Well, at least, if nothing else, this game has been fun. Second and five. It's a screen. Again, oh my gosh, look at the blockers. It's up to Marks here to stop this, maybe. Thank God, he slowed him up. They broke the tackle, though. He's still on his feet. He's inside the 10 just like that. Oh, I thought we had him stopped miles back. Their screen game has been so good so far, and now it's a first and goal. I don't think that we could hold them to a field goal right now, and that was on me. I knew the route was coming. I just couldn't jump it. One play once they got in that first and goal, and they're in for a touchdown. Three-point lead again, assuming they hit this. And we've got three and a half minutes to work with. I could honestly see us losing this if we score too quick. Nunez, oh, at the five. This is going to be a great chance for him to return. Not record-breaking distances, though, but he gets past the 25. So apparently, if you only get deeper in the end zone, it works out better for us. We're going to try to run to leave Noel on first down here. Off tackle. He's got a little bit to work with. That was solid. Good eight yards. Question is, do we burn a lot of clock here or not? Ooh, their running back is out for the game. He had a concussion on that, uh, on that touchdown, and... Is it Richie or Chip that's in right now? Because they just missed. It was Chip Breedlove. His first pass of the game, they're way over to leave Noel's head. Kind of forgot that it wasn't Richie in for a second. Third and two, we'll go play action. And I, I'm i just... All game, I, I tried to get rid of that one, but all game, I've just been brain farting on who to throw to. Way too long in the pocket. We're at the 19-yard line, so I'm going to have to kick this one away. I really wish we could go for it, but unfortunately, we've got to just hope that the defense comes up with a stop. And, oh, I could have slammed him there. They're going to be starting from across midfield. Josh Meritor gets 11 yards on that one. Defense has to come up with a stop now. 
absolutely imperative we see a stop from the D first and 10 uh, that's gonna probably oh my gosh wide open wide open is Marquez Little for 32 yards and at the very least they're in field goal range now with two minutes on the clock they're not gonna show any signs of slowing though <laughs> immediately go into the hurry up it could be burning clock here and you know forcing us to take our timeouts it wouldn't surprise me to see them just burn the play clock no they're gonna go with a draw and only get a, a yard there and with them keeping in this hurry up I'm not like super worried about uh, calling my timeouts down three it's gonna be another run please let us get the third down we will but he's got six yards there we're gonna sell out to stop the run on this play Thunder smoke, third and three. Either they score a touchdown here or we force them to kick a field goal. Looks like it's going to be a handoff, and we do it. Let's take the timeout. First one, a minute and 25 on the clock. Field goal safe zone again because I do not trust these guys after faking one earlier. On fourth and two, they're going to false start. That might help us a little bit, but definitely not from a range perspective. We're going to have a, a minute and 20 seconds to march down the field and score a touchdown for the win. The field goal won't do it. We got to make sure that we hit our extra point, but it's a six point game here. We need a good return from Nunez and we're bringing in Richie Kirk and Nunez. Can he play hero here? He's going to have a great spot on the field to receive it. Does he have the edge? Well, if nothing else, please no penalties. This is going to help tremendously. He's across midfield. The 50-yard return. We're going to start at the 45-yard line. We've got a minute and 15 and two timeouts. We don't have to get it all right away. Old Dominion faithful are getting real excited. We've got a wide open Donnie Schaefer across the 30. Make sure we're in the hurry up here. We're looking for Khalif James here. First and 10 on that corner strike. And Khalif has it across the 15. A minute and five on the clock. We can't be too quick here. This is a risky play and we could lose if I screw it up. In fact, we're not gonna try to screw it up. We are gonna hand it off to Talib Noel. Nothing doing. That's a shame. Second and 13 now. Try the slot outs. It's worked so well for us. They're gonna bring pressure which leaves Noel kind of open. We hit him underneath the, the man to beat, but it's third and five. We've got 37 seconds. I'm calling the exact same play again. 33 seconds. A first down can still be gained. Talib. We hit him. Fourth and inches. I got to take a time out there. Oh, no. Decision-making time. What play are we going to go with? We're going to trot out Richie Kirk for this QB sneak. If he gets it, we have a good chance to win. If he doesn't, we're in real trouble. Richie gets the bush push for the touchdown. Two yards into the end zone on the QB sneak on fourth and inches ties the game. We can't be too safe or celebratory yet because there's 23 seconds on the clock, but the extra point is good. If we take a one point lead, we want this ball to be returned. You know, a decent amount to burn some clock. 23 seconds. Get them probably under 20, but all their timeouts is dangerous. And that was a pretty solid return, but 19 seconds to go. Old Dominion has all the timeouts. The Monarchs definitely can win this. A field goal. And they've got a good kicker. A field goal wins. We're going to go into the nickel. A little 3-3-5. Get some extra help uh, in the coverage department. Send back a safety. And we're gonna only going to rush three here. Trying to just get stops like that. Oh, it would have been better for us if he caught it, but it's an incompletion. 16 seconds now. This is so absolutely massive. Expecting passes. Let's actually back everybody up on this play. And they kind of had to go short again. So first time out taken, 11 seconds on the clock. We can afford to give up a couple more short plays, but not a huge amount. I'm gonna watch that short route here, actually. First and 10. No screen plays. Oh, I didn't watch the short route well enough, but seven seconds, they're forced to take their second timeout as they get to midfield. We're going prevent here, I think. Seven seconds is enough for them to get something up. 
that they're barely going to be able to get into field goal range. So I'll watch for that. No, this is going to be a four for it's a Hail Mary. And we pick it off. It's Penn with the interception. One second on the clock. I'm just going to step out of bounds. And the Dwarves are going to walk out of Virginia with a win. Our second pick of the season, and it could not have come at a more important time in the game. We knock off the 5-1 Old Dominion Monarchs, and we're going to survive to stay unbeaten in conference play. What an absolute thriller. It's an ESPN classic. And gosh, I feel bad for Trip Breedlove because Richie Kirk had to come in and win the game for him. Four total touchdowns, a whole lot going on there. Just those those slot out routes that we keep hitting to Tlaib Noel. And how about this one, diving for the touchdown, just barely breaks the plane for the touchdown. And the defense doing just enough to hold these guys to, uh, you know, a couple of field goals late in the game. Well, that's got to be where the, the sliders are starting to get dialed in if we're going to be playing thrilling games like that where we have to pull it out of our ass to win. We get a solid amount of XP, and Hawk Disco is going to get his second level up because of that game. Richie Kirk ends up going 22-31 for 350 yards and three touchdowns. Just one pick. It was kind of my fault. Uh, so 70% pass completion for 190 QBR. That's pretty damn solid. On the ground. Tlaib carried it 10 times and only got 20 yards. That is not good, but he did get a touchdown. And that's almost enough for it to not matter. Richie took it three times for zero yards, uh, but got one touchdown. So uh, I think they count sacks against that, but I'm not entirely sure. Noel had a receiving touchdown, six catches for 49 yards. AJ Norton had six catches as well, 102 yards and a touchdown for him. And Khalif James had the last touchdown with Donnie Schaefer and Dane Upshaw getting another seven catches between the two of them. Defensively, Keon Wilcox, I think he continues to be the, the best player on this defense at the left end spot. He gets two sacks, three tackles for loss. And Rick Penn there on the Hail Mary to end the game gets the interception and wisely steps out of bounds instead of, you know, leaving it up to chance that he might fumble it. Uh, how about Gene Nunez? Nine kick returns for 403 yards, an average of 44 with the 103-yard record-setting long kick return for the touchdown absolutely is the reason why we were able to win that game. If we don't get that, I, I think we're in big trouble. 12 first downs for us compared to their 20. They put up 506 yards of total offense. We were just uh, above 350. So they dominated our defense. They ran for 102 where we ran for five. Five rushing yards. That's that's gross. Oh, man. They threw 30 times. Only missed 10 for four touchdowns. 404 passing yards. Uh, not good on third down, though. We were 3-7, and seven, which is pretty solid. They were 4-11. and 11. They were perfect on their fourth downs. We missed one. And uh, their two-point conversions, they were good. Both teams perfect in the red zone. They just had to settle for two field goals. Three turnovers for us, one for them. And ours, I think, were maybe more crucial. Two fumbled passes and an interception. And then, you know, we gave up a solid amount of kick return yards, but certainly not more than them. Because of our kick return yards, we do win the total yardage battle. And the time of possession, pretty damn evenly split. 11 flat and 13 flat. Our game seems to be the only game that came down to the wire. Uh, pretty comfortable victories around the nation. Some FCS teams getting beaten. And our players of the game, Richie Kirk and Brock Ferris. Kind of interesting that the they're going to give it to Brock Ferris. He had a sack, but you know, Keon Wilcox had two sacks and Rick Penn had an interception. But Richie Kirk, I, I definitely agree with that. With our level up to Hawk Disco, we're going to finish out the scouting tree. And it kind of helps us throughout the, the seasons in saving a ton of points. And then our next ones will start to go towards the opener and closer as we uh, allow ourselves to have more points for recruiting every week.
John Wilson, our defensive coordinator, and Nathan Irons, our offensive coordinator, are getting close to leveling up, but I can't wait for them to get to a spot where they actually start benefiting the team. We'll go ahead and sim through the week just to see if maybe we're ranked as we have Florida International on the horizon for week 10. Well, we're going to just continue to slowly lose people uh, in the recruiting game. Corey Hawk is going to go to Ole Miss. Gabe O'Neill goes to Minnesota, and we'll get locked out by Sam Clark. I really hope we can start signing a couple guys soon. Looks like we're going to have another solid game in our hands for Week 10 as the Dwarves at 6-1 are going to have to play the Golden Panthers of FIU in the mine. And FIU is 5-2. And in the top 25 polls, we're still not getting any respect. 6-1 and one right now on the season and not even receiving votes in the coaches poll. The media poll feels the same way about us. And in the uh, second iteration of the BCS, we still aren't sitting there. Just disrespected. Although there's a lot of undefeated teams left. What well, most notably from this game is that we are now bowl eligible. And it's only week 10. Take a quick look ahead. Herb Street's going to predict us to win, and it's just the same story as usual. Uh, the other team with the better stats overall. We're going to be the underdogs slash overdogs going into this one. That's going to do it for this episode of the Dwarves. It kind of feels like we're starting to get this series a little bit locked in with the sliders. And uh, we got some exciting games. I think that's probably one of the most exciting games of NCAA I've played in a very, very long time. And I play a lot of this game. If you want to watch me play some more, we're live pretty often with the opposite of this team, the Western Arizona Giraffes. They're six foot seven or taller over on twitch.tv slash poonmaster69. Otherwise, that's going to do it. If you want to know when more Dwarves episodes get uploaded, feel free to subscribe. And if you've got any, you know, comments or, or things that we could maybe do to make this series better please let me know in the comments that being said thank you for watching you guys are the short kings these are the dwarves and wherever you are have a good night or have a good morning we'll see you later adios